Welcome back. So in the last video, we took a look at getting your environment set up to work with the IMC EAPI or RESTful API. So why do you want to do this? Well, APIs are cool. All the cool kids are doing this. And there's a reason for that. The reasons are many, but most of all for me, time is money is one of the big ones. Um, if you can do something programmatically, you can automate it away. You can allow computers to take the hard part of the work, right? And that gives us back our time. And, and for me, time is actually more precious than money because you can always get more money. You can never get more time. One of the things I love is letting other people do the work. Imagine if you're installing a new IMC system. Wouldn't it be better if we could just give someone a spreadsheet and say, hey, fill this in for me? And then you can just pipe it into your program and, and, and let the program do the work of getting the system up and running for you. So let's take a look at how that might happen. So here we are on the IMC homepage. You know it, you love it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to work with operators today. So we're going to go over to the system operator management and go look at the operators. And as you can see here, there is one operator. So this is pretty much a blank system. Um, one operator is good, but of course, if you're trying to do anything as far as any auditing, it's really not going to do you much good if everybody's using the same account. So we're going to go over here and look at the RESTful API, which as you can see is really um, the same address with an IMC RS. We're going to go look at Plat Manager, and we're going to look at the APIs that we are going to be playing with today, and that is the operator resource. So there's a few of them here. So one of the first ones is the operator um, get, in which case we just hit the try it now button, and you can see a JSON array. Um, good stuff, right? Um, this obviously is not something that you're going to be wanting to use longer term. So we're going to move over to PyCharm, and we're going to type in that command Jupyter Notebook that we looked at in the last video. And so what Jupyter Notebook is, again, this is a just a, a way to share these files so you guys can go and look at the examples directory, which is included in the GitHub repo that you um, cloned in the last video. And as Jupyter Notebook starts up here, it's going to allow us to look at these files, which is a combination of Markdown and Python code all on the same file. Really super easy to use, um, nice to be able to play with. And what we'll do here is I will flip over and get this back to my Chrome. Apparently, this opened up in a different browser. There we go. And you will cut and paste that in to the local host. Again, I just like to have everything in the, in the same browser here. It makes it super easy to show you guys. And now we're going to click on the examples button and we're going to go in and look at the IMC import operators uh, IPython notebook or Jupyter notebook. So this is going to open up and give us the ability to go through and look through this particular file. So you can see here that this is working with operators. Um, a couple of things we're going to do here is import a couple of default libraries and then as well the off as well as the operator um, from the IMC library. So the first thing we're going to do is input IMC credentials. So we're going to create an auth object, which is part of the IMC auth class here. So auth equals IMC auth. And then we just have the HTTP, IP address, um, port number, username, password. And now we're going to list the current operators that are on here. So if we go back to the other tab and look, you can see that you've actually got that one object, right? You've got one object, but it's got multiple lists, right? So this is actually a, a native Python dictionary. All right, so we're going to use the ops list equals get plat operator method. And then we're going to use the um, URL is going to be, of course, a um, attribute of that auth object. And then the auth is also going to be an, uh, or creds is going to be a, a um, attribute of that auth object. And then we're going to print out there are currently however many number of operators configured. So in this one, um, and this is, this is the fun of playing with Python. So we're going to go back and look at something here because I have a feeling that I have a bug in my code, right? So you guys get to see this live. So we're going to go through and we're going to click this again because I have nine operators, but that's not right. We saw we only have one operator. So I think that that will be because um, if we go in and look at this ops list here, I think what I'm doing is I'm actually counting the number of key value pairs in the dictionary as opposed to counting the number of objects in the list. So what this is telling me is this is returning as a dictionary, not as a list. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, look at that. 
there we go. See, you can see it's the curly braces says this is a Python data structure known as a dictionary, which is a list of key value pairs. And if we do a string on it here, apparently having a bad typing day. Wow, look at that. A bad typing day for me. Do a length of the ops list. There we go. The output is nine. So if we were to count those, which we can go back in and just get rid of that uh, that second command there, that len, and, and len is len, which is the length. We can now look and see that there is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's an object, seven, eight, nine. And there we go. So we have nine in there, which is cool, right? So now we understand above why it says there are currently nine operators. So the problem is actually not in the system. The problem was is like so many times you will find when you start doing more coding is with my code. So let's scroll down to the bottom here. And let's do something a little more interesting because all we've really done at this point is looked to see that there's only one operator. So let's create a whole bunch of operators. So I have a CSV file here and if I uh, run this here, I'm opening this with the open statement, right? I'm going to go over and open up this operator list you can see here I'll, I will reveal it in Finder there is there's that thing so that was imported as long as as long as you um, cloned the github right you could open it with Excel if you wanted to but I'm just gonna do this in uh, in PyCharm natively it's just a CSV file comma separated values and we're gonna go in here and just to show you guys that this is being done live I will cut and paste this and add another row there we go and I'm going to add an operator just for you guys, just because I love you. So we will call this, the, the name of it will be the IMC channel. If you were to look at the top row, you can see here full name, session name, um, password, all those kind of things. So you can actually, if you open this in Excel, it's just like a spreadsheet, right? You'll be able to see the column headers at the top, and away we go. Um, fix the spelling mistakes here. Let me go back over. Now I'm going to run this function again, and you'll notice here at the bottom, suddenly there will be an extra one, that IMC channel that we just created. So now what we're going to do is create an operator function, and this is just a, we're going to do that def statement, and we're going to use the default value of that IMC operator list.csv, which is what we had above. Then we're going to use that same kind of a open statement, but this time we're going to uh, do a try, and we're going to say for every operator in this reader object, I want you to pass that into the create operator function. And this is a function available from the IMC, the Pi HPE IMC library. Right again, so we see here, we got no operators, right? Cool. So we will run this. Wait a minute. Oh, it's import operators not defined. So we're going to go back up, run that, shift enter. We're going to run this again. And as you can see, operator successfully created. Uh, 3.19 seconds. We're going to go back to the IMC. We're going to refresh and BAM! Check that out. Isn't that cool? We just created about, uh, what, 13, 14 operators total? 13 operators in a whopping 3 seconds. So if you were typing that all out by hand, that might take you about a minute apiece. All right, so imagine the time savings here. So now when we run the list of operators again, you now have 14 operators configured. Pretty cool, right? So Let's look now at resetting an operator password, which is another function available in the PyHPE library. So as long as you have the um, credentials to be able to really ab actually manipulate these objects, right? So you're gonna need that EAPI if you're using operator groups. Um, okay, the first one was successfully, oh, I got an extra line here. Again, debugging live, live for your pleasure. So I'm going to set the operator for this particular account. And you can see here that it's uh, passed, successfully changed. So the last thing we're going to do is clean up the system when we're done, right? That's always clean up after yourself, especially if you're playing around with this stuff, right? Um, so one of the things that I like to do, as you'll see here as I'm creating these IPython notebooks, these Jupyter notebooks, is to go through and make sure that I perform all the functions I want to and clean them all out at the end so I don't uh, leave, leave a mess, you know? Leave it as clean as you found it. So I'm going to go in here, and I've got a, a list where I've just defined these. I could have actually pulled this out of the CSV file again, but I'm going to be a little bit lazy here, right? I'm added that YouTube account that I just created at the end, right? I get a unexpected, um, 
okay so that probably means that I have not closed this off properly so that's add in the the last frame here okay cool and make sure that that's correct now I'm just gonna going to go back and say okay show me what's in the ops list again there we go the list is good YouTube at the bottom all the other accounts are in there so now I'm going to pass that list directly in and instead of going into the um, add operators or import operators I'm going to pass it into the delete plat operator okay so ops list for operator in ops list I want you to delete each one of these so just for giggles let's see if this takes uh, any more time so I'm going to go up to this run the import function that we just created I'm going to copy that down I'm going to put the start time up at the start. Delete these out. There we go. That should be good. And I'm going to hit shift enter to run this. And as you can see, we are deleting all those. And that took a whopping 3.4 seconds. So now I'm going to flip back over to the other screen here. And we're going to do a refresh. Bam again no operators now imagine if you had done that manually right so one of the other things here quickly to look at is um, in the API the swagger UI which is this API interface you'll you'll see this in a lot of um, systems as this is kind of an, an industry standard at this point um, you can on the right hand side go over and look at all the schema and so all the attributes that these particular the JSON body may require here right so this is the um, add operator Right, we also use the delete one and we can also go to the user guide where you can get even more information so you go click on the API references and we're going to scroll down there we go uh, add operator so in here you'll have documentation you'll see the return results again what does the message body look like show you an example right isn't that awesome so we can also look at some of the other um, the other methods we used. We've got modify operator, the delete operator, the query operators, right? You basically got everything that you would want to work with. So if you want to see how that PyHPE library was actually built, you can come in here and you can build your own methods. You can issue pull requests. We would love to see more people developing. And with that, we'll see you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial.